Welcome to another episode of Candid Moments. Today, I am thrilled to have an exceptional human with me today. He, he defies all odds. And this man continues to blow my mind. And I'm so grateful to be friends with him. Please help me welcome Daniel Vincent to the microphone. Hi, Dan. Hello, Candice. Nice to see you. It sure is. It's been some time. Since you were on the Mo Monday stage, I think. I think so. Which was what, almost, is it two years now? No, no. was it the November show? Wait, no. I remember wearing a heavy jacket. Yeah, so it's been over two years. My goodness. How have you been? I have been doing awesome, doing all kinds of things on my side. Yeah. Oh, good. What? uh, So before I forget, this is like, this is how I'd like to start. What are three things today that you're grateful for? One, the fact that I'm here right now. I could be doing so many other things, but no, I'm, I have the opportunity to be, to be here with you. I love that. Second is the fact that I wake up every morning thinking, wow, you know what? I have a roof over my head. I could easily be outside cold and wet, but no, I'm here. And the very, the, the greatest thing is I'm thankful to be alive after so many, so many things that have happened to me in the past. And I'm, it's given me the opportunity to thank, thank the greater powers for allowing me to still be here. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay, so my turn. Uh, to summarize, I'm grateful for the weather. Number one, I am grateful for the weather. That yes. storm that we had the other day, as a result of the storm, mm-hmm. the next day, all of the ice was off the lake where I live. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the birds are singing, the neighbors are out and about. It is spring, it's officially spring, and I love it. It makes my body feel so much better. Yes, um, for sure. I'm grateful for my schedule. I get to, because I'm the boss, this woman is in charge of how the flow goes with my schedule. I have such great people in my life and my community. I love being a part of this community and what I do. I am grateful for this opportunity to connect with you today, Dan. That's great. Wow, that's great to hear. And it's, I love your thoughts. I love where, you, I love where you're directed. Oh, thank you. It, mm-hmm. uh, it definitely comes from a place of gratitude. Um, we all have our own journey that we're on, right? And we're all seeking some sort of balance or purpose. Mm-hmm. So, what, what, what I'm, <clears throat> and you're talking about, we all, you're saying that we all have different journeys and we do. Mm-hmm. Every single life, is has had a different twist and however some lives could be have a closer bond closer connection because of where they've been and i know both you and i have had a connection with the brain yes i love that i love that and so you and i have a very unique opportunity or outlook Mm -hmm. on life as a result of the connection with the brain absolutely absolutely we're very blessed in that way so blessed Mm -hmm. it's it's very in many ways it candace it's it's gratifying and because where we're at we have more knowledge more wisdom or i should i i can say that we've got wisdom that other people will never have because of where we've been what what we've encountered in life and it's it's given us so much perspective hasn't it it has it's interesting but at the same time those people that will not have that knowledge or wisdom that we do Mm -hmm. we don't share that same wisdom or knowledge because they have their own 
wisdom and knowledge from their journey. Well, They're not sure. supposed to understand the brain the way we do. So people have no idea, like people who are watching this episode, like we're not live right now, but the people who will watch this episode are thinking, okay, well, they know my background, mm -hmm. brain, but they don't know Dan's background with his brain. Right. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. It's been a while since I have spoken about it. I've, I, I have very different uh, pieces of online and, <clears throat> excuse me, and on, on video. But nothing, I haven't done the full scope of, of things in, in some time. Right. So, right. So my, my journey starts back when I was just a, a little wee guy. Actually, I was going to say like this, like lower this way, but it's actually more like this here. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, I was wow. horizontal. I was not working. I was not walking. Yes, I was about this, this long. So, and it started off uh, through a convulsion. A convulsion which an uncle of mine who was babysitting for my parents, and I must have been maybe a few months old. And he happened to notice that something was happening in the bedroom where he could, he could hear some shaking, he could hear some, some noises, didn't know what, what was going on. So he walked up and he noticed that the, there I was moving around in the bed. Not like a two, no, not like a three month old should be moving. So he, he happened to, so he picked me up, but I was, I was hot. So that was the beginning of my journey, which turned into convulsions and eventually into seizures through epilepsy. And those seizures start initially became, they were uh, what, you, what I call uh, absent seizures, which is a term. When absent seizures, I was staring into space where you, there was nothing. Okay, and this, there's absolutely nothing. I couldn't, I, I wasn't aware. Didn't even know that this was happening. And eventually, people thought, and people around me didn't know what was going on. In, in essence, neither did I. And that turned into uh, grand mal seizures. Which then, at that point, I was on the floor shaking. Well, looking up from a, at people who were staring at me, not even knowing what I was doing there, sinking to the bottom of eight feet of water, Candace. <gasps> sinking to, and thankfully, having a cousin of mine or a friend look at where I once was and noticing bubbles slowly surfacing and blowing apart and looking down and there I was so they, they hauled me out and I'm still here to talk about it oh my gosh yeah for sure so that's that that was kind of the very beginning of where I was at right and that starts what in the brain causes that do we know uh we have a lot of a lot of knowledge on this and every every single year there's more and more stuff coming out now if you, if you think of the brain the brain is like an electrical grid around the world okay, okay. so if you can picture all these electrical wires going to each and every house in each city in each province or state and each country right then not, not all of a sudden you're global. And they all have, all these things have a connection. You're a switch to your light, a switch to a plug to, to start up your vacuum. Have you ever noticed when you put, once in a while you pull out a, your plug to a vacuum and you see a little spark? Yeah. You've noticed that, okay. Yeah. Well, what, ha what would happen if that would happen in your brain? Where there's a little spark right there, the one, one switch. And all of a sudden, something shorts out. It's a glitch. There's a glitch. And all of a sudden, what happens? What happens is what happened to me? Shaking on the ground or staring in space or blinking. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. So our operating system mm -hmm. is the brain. Correct. How would, so, and the brain stem 
if we're speaking in metaphors, what would the brain stem be? Because the, the neurons are going from the brain down the spinal column to yes. the organs in your body. Mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what that brainstem would do, it would signify. No, I don't know, maybe we can't put it in a metaphor. Yeah. But later I, on, fast forward to when you got some answers or mm -hmm. when the new Dan arrived. Right. Well, uh, after, after mul the multiple attempts and trying to medicate who I was, trying to, uh, trying to uh, tame those seizures to where they, think, where they could control them, they eventually found out that they felt that it couldn't be done because every time they changed medication, it, I would adapt to it when within six months time, I was back to where I was at. So shaking on the ground or staring in space again. And which prevented me from functioning, lowered my grades because all the medication I was on, and I'm, <clears throat> and I moved on from that, and then I ended up going for surgery. Surgery where they went, they actually went in, and they did what they had to do. Never told me what they did, but they they had done a number on me, and I I walked away, and those seizures had that I was getting, me shaking on the ground, they were gone. Wow. Yeah, and that, absolutely. And that was my, my first, first miracle. And this was one of three, three big stumbling blocks that I had hit. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I got to that. And all of a sudden, I noticed that I wasn't getting those seizures. However, I was getting a lot of, I was still having a lot of anxiety. And this, this anxiety was so severe that it would, it would cripple me. Candace, it would absolutely cripple me. I'd get goosebumps all over my body. Fear like you would, like you could not understand. Like maybe I can explain something like this you, where you could put in perspective for someone who's not getting any seizures or, or this anxiety, yeah, let's put it this way. If you, Candace, I, I put you in a cage with a lion. All right. Yes. Here, here you are with a cage with a lion. I'm like and then this lion, close the cage, lock it up. And this lion, all of a sudden you find out he's hungry. And he's looking at you. There's no way out, Candace. Now you're sitting there, okay? You're, you're seriously, you're sitting, you're sitting there and thinking, what do I do? You, all of a sudden, you, you're, you're on edge. You know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of, a sec of seconds. Now, that's the fear I was experiencing. That type of a fear. And where you can add on, tack on uh, paranoia. Okay. Where you're always on edge. And there's always something, you know, you know what's going to happen. And at that level of fear, however, there's nothing to be fearing, to fear of. There's nothing to fear. But it's the, it, what is, what, it's the brain telling you that it's all these connections again. Mm -hmm. All right. All of a sudden, connections touch differently or let go. And something's telling your brain, says so it's time to be scared. Don't know why. But here I was. And I, could ha I, I didn't want to be, have anyone around me. However, I couldn't be alone. Hard to explain, but this, is, this was my scenario. Okay. So this was still persisting and kept, it kept on happening. And it, I, when I was in my mid-20s, a friend of mine happened to bring me along and he introduced me to some of his friends who were conducting a multi-level meeting 
a marketing meeting. And this, I fell in love with these people right away. So just to what I was doing, he was introducing me to a concept for to make some extra money. And I was in for it. So I, but I fell in love with these people, Kenneth. I fell in love with them because for the very first time, the first time in my life, someone believed in me. They believed that I could become someone. They didn't know what I, where I was coming from. They had no idea of my background. Maybe mm-hmm. they would have swayed, changed their minds. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, no, but that, 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 uh, once we were done, they plugged me into a system. And this was a, a self-development system. And little did I know what this was about to do. And I started that plugged in. And I started to become assertive. I started to become confident. I was becoming happier. And in time, after multiple dollars spent on self-development, approximately maybe $50,000 spent on self-development itself. I was that embedded in this. And 15 years later, I look back and I started thinking, where are those, those, those feelings, that anxiety that I, I was having? Mm-hmm. And at this point, I found out that this anxiety, it's called, they were called auras. And they were, it, it wasn't anxiety itself. It was actually an aura. So an aura is a, a small seizure. So a partial seizure. Okay. An indication of epilepsy. And I hadn't had this for so long. And I couldn't figure out what had happened. And today, when I realized that uh, personal development had turned my, my, whole way, my whole way of living around, when I became assertive and confident and happier, my brain kind of rewired itself. Mm-hmm. And it, it became solid. Things started happening. And the things that were happening were like everything I would touch would kind of turn out. Would, and the more confident I got, the better the better it would get. So have you ever heard of the law of attraction? Yes, sir. All right. And here's what was happening. What I was thinking would manifest itself into reality. I was attracting other people towards me. I was attracting other uh, greatness coming my way the better it got i got the better the more everything came in and as this was going on and while i was doing this if i can go back a few years i had gotten that surgery but they never let me know what they had done and at 18 years old when my, they never told my parents what they had done. And they, they didn't have to, because at this point I was at 18. I was to consent myself. My parents were no, no longer consensual to me. So it turned out to be my decision to go for surgery. But what they had done, they kept it a secret. So a few years ago, when I was at a, in a doctor's office, which they were looking at the scan of my brain. The doctor looked at me and said, Mr. Vincent, uh, what happened when you were younger in your, in your age? Did you have a, an accident? Did something happen? And I proceeded to tell him, to tell this doctor. And she, sure enough, uh, knew what was going on. And she smirked. I was wondering, because I knew she was witnessing my, my own history, what had happened in my past. What was going on? What had happened when I was on that operating table? And this is when she brought it up. And she told me that what, they, what she was looking at, or what I was looking at, was the removal of the whole right temporal lobe. <gasps> oh, every time you say that. Oh. Yeah, I know. And you're still like the right temporal lobe. 
of yes. the brain. Yes. <sighs> the, and so I, I found this is, I asked the doctors, well, how, how am I still functioning? How am I still, you and I are still having this conversation? Right. And it, with all the research I've done and including what she's told me, the brain apparently remapped itself took a different route so if you take a, a scan of my brain right now you've got this huge void on the one side right which is gone is it, you, what, it, what it looks like is you've got all this this uh stuff on the top and all of a sudden there's a big white patch on the side which indicates a void so the matter's all gone so you are a scientific miracle, Dan. Thank you. You, you but you know that, right? Like you should I, be in like um, the scientific journals of the world. You, like you. So lots of people don't know what you do for a living. You're a coach, but are you still working in the mining industry? I'm still working in the mining industry, and I'm I'm, I'm out there as a coach now, helping others through uh, through epilepsy to do what I've done and to remap their own minds and to, not uh, not all because they've they have a void in the in their brain like I do however the uh, seizures happen for a reason seizures happen for multiple reasons and just to find out what the reason is what is, and I, I'm I search I'm out there looking for triggers triggers to seizures so me and it triggers uh are what what has led to the seizure what what created that seizure what was the trigger point that led to someone dropping or and or even someone who who potentially can drown because we there are accidents all the time and right right people can stop breathing because of their seizures Wow. So, so my, go ahead. No, no. I, how are you coaching people through epilepsy? I'm starting off with the, I, I train, I, I, I coach people so that they can start feeling good about themselves. Understand. I want them to understand that uh, how they became to who they are right now at this moment in time, like even like yourself, who, who are you? You're Okay. And I've been asked that before. Who are you, Dan? He says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Dan. And how do you not know this? However, who is Dan? Oh, that's a different question. Who is Candace? Only Candace can, can say who Candace is. Because mm -hmm. Candace knows what she, who she is. Now, does everyone know who they are? Most people don't. Most people don't know. I have. Okay. So when you say who is Candace, mm -hmm. um, post injury, if you were to ask me that, I were to tell you this is who I am, and the doctor would say, "No, that's not who you are. Right. This is the new you, because you have to build from the ground up. You can't mm. do X, Y, and Z like you used to anymore." but your brain functions differently. Your personality has been affected as well. And you're just mm -hmm. a totally different human. Mm -hmm. So for you, post-injury, was the self affected? Like, was Dan a different person? Absolutely. Like how you felt and your personality and your interactions with people? It, post -sur prior to surgery, I was that kid in the corner behind the curtains listening in to some people talking because i was so afraid to say anything just to, to make have my voice being heard okay. i was i was the kid who was in grade school who would cringe any time a teacher would say anything about an oral report is it just that the fact that the street teacher would say that i would i i, I visualize myself and right there in front of the class says you got it you can i have to go in front of class no way and today i speak in front of hundreds same here i was yeah. that kid too i would wow i really? wanted like 
the the fire alarm to go off or something where we had to leave and I didn't have to present <laughs> in front of the class. Yeah. I was that kid too. Wow. Careful what you wish for because look what happened to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Right. Wow. So it's yeah. almost like a blessing in disguise. It totally is a blessing. So and that's that's for anyone. So we we spoke about prior to who you are today. So your past. Your past has created the person you are today. However, knowing what we know, we can understand that our, our past does not need to dictate our future. Correct. How often how do, you, are we, do we hear people say that, I, I'm, I'm doing this because this is what happened to me when I was younger. I'm like this because this, because I'm like this because such and such thing happened way back when. I was raised this way. Do we need to be dependent on the past? And our that this our our focus is on the past, but our our dependency can totally shift if we allow it to. We do not need to be dependent to, to things that happened to us in our history. No, it might be a very big part of mm -hmm. what has helped shape us. It it prov if if anything, here's here's the good thing about. Even, even something that could, could be negative, something that happened in your past that wasn't good, it, could, it provides knowledge. It provides absolutely, absolute knowledge. Have you ever heard of uh, the, the term forgive and forget? Yes. We all have, haven't we? Yes. Now, I, I don't agree with that, with that statement in any way, shape, or form. Which part? The forget part? Uh, the forget part. You can forgive. And I, I, I totally endorse that. Okay. Forgive. And it, not, not to say that you're going to forgive the, a, a situation and forgive what, what, what happened. But however, be okay with it. Like, let it go. Be okay with the situation so that you can move on. Right. It happened. So I've got, I have so many other stories behind me that if I had not let go, I'd be stuck. I'd be in jail. Uh, oh. uh, in, in, in my, no, in my physical jail, in oh. my own, own emotional, okay. emotional jail. Okay. Let me, let me elaborate on that. I can attest to that too. Okay, let, yeah. So let me elaborate on that. Have you ever been to the zoo? Yeah. Okay. So you've been to a zoo. In the zoo, there were animals in, a, in cages. Correct? Yes. So let's just say, let's picture this, an ape. A huge ape. Strong, really strong. Now, this ape, when he first got in, they put this ape in a cage. As you, let's just say, as you see it, here he is sitting in a corner. And looking at people walk by, you know the, these round eyes that they have—they black eyes. They're just looking, and then they're looking. Yeah. Right, and they're, they're almost—they almost feel like something you can cuddle. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. seriously. But before before that happened, when they that ape first. How that ape got to where he's just sitting there and looking around, how that ape got there is that when they first put him in the cage, that ape was furious, wakes up from the sedation, and he's in a cage. He wants out, shaking that cage, rattling it, and jumping. He wants out and wants to tear anyone apart and until he figures out. I can't move. I can't move those bars. So it kind of drops down. Then he's pacing, pacing like a lion would do in a cage. Have you seen lion pace? Lions pace yeah. around back and forth, back and forth. It's just, why are these people staring at me? Right. So, and all of a sudden, they they become reserved. Nobody understands. Nobody understands me. 
And I bring this up because that can be our human brain, our human mind. Yeah. As that ape, we start off and we're, we are furious. Why is this happening to me? How is And until you kind of accept it, then you sit back and you start thinking, you know what? Nobody understands me. And that's going to be so many people. Nobody understands me. However, if that ape could turn that around and think and start understanding itself. Wow. 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 The ape, the ape is, is an animal. Mm -hmm. Has a different brain than we are. We do. Yes. But the, the good thing about this is that we as human beings have the ability to, to start understanding who we are, what we're made of. And this is where the self-development came in on my part. And I started, and this was a 15-year journey until I, I understood where I was at. Now, I've been in, within self-development for almost 30 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. How to, to where I'm at today. The self-development and everything you're talking about right. how as humans it makes me think of what because dr matheson said what do we and animals how are we different it's because we have language that's how our brain developed because we have language and your self-development journey was only possible with language, right? Yes. Okay. Language, language to you and language to me. All right. My own language talking to myself. What the stories I was telling myself in my head. As a human being, we have the ability to talk to ourselves and we listen well. Oh, we do. <laughs> and we listen. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, we, and let me explain that. Okay. Okay. If we say anything to our minds, how often are we caught in a vicious circle in a repetitive conversation? I'm not good. I'm this or I'm that. And this is because of who I am. And I, this is something I've done for years. I've done that for decades, convincing myself that I was not able to do something. And to the point where I would actually bring myself satisfaction by, by proving to others that I was not capable of do some, doing something. So then your, your mind was correct when you told yourself that you weren't able to. Exactly right. It gave me a sense of gratitude, of, not, sorry, of satisfaction, saying, you know what, I was right to know that I was wrong. As if that makes any sense. Ouch. Yeah, that's um, not a conundrum. Um, what's it called? Um, like it defeats its own purpose. Yes. It's... See, words escape me sometimes too. And I have a full functioning brain. So uh -huh. there's no reason for that. There's just like a scar on not my right frontal lobe, on the right frontal lobe. So it's not the yes. temporal lobe, it's the frontal. Frontal, lobe. okay, right, right. So there's there's like the griff on, on this side. Oh, like, yeah. okay. But that's okay. It uh, It's part of me. Yes. Which is miraculous. Because we, mm. we see, I can still use language. It's amazing. I would, I would think that you have developed skills post your injury. Yeah. That you did not, you would have never developed otherwise. You have right. had to cope. You have had to endure. You have had to instill, you put your feet on the ground and say, this, is, this, will need, this needs to be done. And by the, with the work you've done, you have, Candace, you have created the unique, unique, absolutely gorgeous and wonderful person you have, you are, as, as we speak. 
Thank you. And you have done the same with your life. It's absolutely remarkable. See, we did not know exactly who we are, but not so much who we, we were, but the abilities and every like, fragment of our brain, like every part of the self, we did not know we had that until we lost that. That's right. right. That's so right. I don't know anybody else who, who can like level with me like this. Okay. Wow. Because you, me and you were unique beings. We're, we're kind of superstars in that aspect, you know, in the brain world, because you can, yes. you can put 34,000 doctors in the same conference center and we could tell our story and they could say, well, I, I, I've had patients with similar this and that. You know what? Doctors do their thing. Mm -hmm. I can't relate to doctors because they, my doctor cannot relate to me. Yes, you know what? Right. She studied, she's smart as a whip. She teaches at the university mm -hmm. and she treats people all day, every mm -hmm. single day. But she does not know how to treat my pain. That, that well, that's another topic that doesn't have to do with the I brain. No, I get it. I get it. I get yeah, it. I really do. I had uh, a uh, one of my clients this week came back to me and said, "You know what? I, I think I'm going to have to stop the uh, uh, to uh, stop a session before we move, we move on." He says, "Why is that?" He says, "Tell me more about it." And just ex ex explains to me. He says, "So she spoke with her neurologist." And she mentioned to her neurologist that she was she was considering going it to the to the path where I'm I'm headed now, or and wanted to to work on her, her self development and possibly start turning things around and even possibly removing her medication. So, okay. so, so turning self. Yeah, so so exchanging the medication for self development. That's a big step, but a very positive step. A huge step. I've done it. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I've, and I did it many a few decades ago. Now, and I and I told this lady like while we were talking that uh, prior to to this conversation she had with her doctor says, "Here's what what can happen." Says you can. If you can possibly eat, start lowering your seizures. And as you progress, as your seizures lower further and further, who knows, we could possibly even start eliminating, eliminate medication. So she brought this to her doctor and he, he was not happy in her words. So he was not happy with her. So it, when and so I, I got on the phone. I said, "Listen, it's, I was there, sorry. This was a message I sent to her, a voice message. So I left her a message, letting her know that, know that. Listen, for one, and I want to tell you, Candace, I am not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't have any type of letters behind my name. I'm a person with a lot of experience. There you go. And which is what I told this lady." He says, here's what we want to do. Because right? says, a, a neurologist is not some, someone I will ever want to go against. Because a neurologist is, has so much knowledge in, in an area I have none in. He's got knowledge of, of the medication, of what it takes. Right. Right? However, he doesn't have the knowledge I have from my experience. Right. And this is what we're working on. Let's try something new. Let's forget about eliminating medication. Let's forget about lowering the seizures. Let's work on who we are and see what happens. Because when, when I did this to myself, I had no idea what I was doing. I did this, what's going on right now, happened by accident. The self-development? The self-development self was... was uh, purposely done 
but the lowering my the, my seizures and getting rid of my seizures was nice. done by accident because this was not what the byproduct was going to be okay. i was just changing my life but these seizures started to disappear and when i looked back i said where where are these seizures and this is when i put two and two together now i've I proceeded with things, and today, I, I know that my stress level, my number one trigger, my stress, my stress does something to my brain, and my, those connections will switch or let go, a short will happen. Do you start to forget more when you're stressed out? Uh, no, I don't. No, that's not that has not been my experience. Okay, for me. However, I I forget a lot anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the reason to, but right. uh, yeah, when I'm stressed out, I forget things or I I mix information up, and it's not a good mm -hmm. a good thing. Yeah, fatigue wow. too. Fatigue and irritability is something for me. Really? But do you, do you have good balance in your life? Uh you you posted something about balance the other day uh, uh the, the physical balance or mental mental balance no like just balance in life Here's... oh you look. see this yeah are you, you... Are, you in, on re, are you in reverse uh, uh no it? i can see it all right so Rest, what do we see and stress we, so the, yes. the very top one if you see the, you see the arrow reduce stress Fitness and diet and your rest. You just spoke about rest. Yeah. I get Great. excellent rest and Great. get lots of exercise, but my Great. diet, it needs to change. Okay. Well, that's, and you're already two thirds ahead of everybody else. You think so? I think so. Because if you're, if your uh, rest is good, And your stress is good. How's your stress? <laughs> um, it's good. It's just minimal. It's okay. it's associated with pain. Okay, so I missed that then. So you, what, what is it? What is what do you have in line here? Your rest is good. Rest. And your your fitness. Yeah, I go to the gym. Okay. And and I dance and yep. I walk to the gym and back and. Good for you. Thank you. Well, it's close and it's, yep. and I walk there with a limp and you think that's going to stop me? I don't think so. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. See, you know, I'd like to say like that I don't have anything to prove, mm -hmm. but I ha always have something to prove. I always have something to prove mm -hmm. to myself. Absolutely. Because those inefficiencies I have as a result yes. of you know, my situation and my brain. I take on more than I should right. just to prove to myself, you know what? You can do this. Okay. So I tell myself I'm a champion. You know, when you were saying you were talking about internal dialogue earlier, mm -hmm. I always tell myself that um, I can, well, not always, but most of the time I tell myself I can handle so much. Right. And then I take <laughs> on too much mm -hmm. or I do too much of an exercise in one class. Right. Mm -hmm. with a previous injury and i re-injure oh. my shoulder and yeah, this was monday today's friday mm -hmm. so i saw that girl last night and i told her no, i did i overdid it i should have known my boundaries mm -hmm. but again learning curve i think we're off tangent sorry <laughs> I, I love this i love it okay good no it's it's all interconnected right mm -hmm. just like with yep. all the the neurons is what are the synapses the synapses in the brain yeah. are those yeah, the yeah. connectors the connect yes okay what are the okay. neurons the the, the cells uh, no i'm i'm trying to go back here because neurons are connections all right i don't remember <laughs> yeah I'm, I, I, I'm still working on that i'm i i and this is one thing about what where i'm at is that uh there are memory problems okay okay and i 
uh, I, I retain certain things, mm-hmm. but I, I cannot retain visual memory. Hey. Okay. I cannot retain even that I see someone. How often do we hear someone say, I, I'm good with names. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm good with remembering what people, who people are, but I, I'm not good with names. Right. Names. I'm, not Correct. Good. I'm the other way around. If I see someone, speak with someone, and turn around, 10 minutes later, I won't remember what that, who that person was. I don't remember that person's face. But you remember their name. Their name will, will, the, their name will stick more because I've got, I can understand vis, uh, auditory. Auditory, okay. Yes. But the visual, I measure something, a measuring tape. I close it. What was that? What did I, what was that number? Okay, so if you didn't write it down when the measuring yeah, tape was open. Exactly. And I've, I've encountered people who start talking with me. And oh, said, oh, crap. This, this person obviously knows who I am. Hi, how are you doing? And, says, and not a clue who that person is. That happens to me often. Oh, there's, yes. There's, who was it the other day? Oh, and I saw her twice in the same week. Mm -hmm. And she told me her name, but Mm -hmm. I remember her face, Mm -hmm. but I don't know why the second time she told me again, I think maybe because she, she knows that I have maybe problems with memory, but my memory is pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. If I've met you like a few times, let's say, Mm -hmm. do you want to talk about age? Like, it's kind of a scary thing because our brain will age, but we, it, like, it's a muscle, so we need to work it, right? Mm-hmm. And everything we do in life is um, communication, our, like, the how much we read. I what say, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's communication, how much we read. Uh, I'm going to tell you. If you if you're concerned for your brain, physical activity for your brain. Here's why. It, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna, gonna give you one statement, all about blood flow. Oh. Okay. If you don't have blood flow to your extremities, and the the most part, if you don't have blood flow to your brain. Things happen. Things do happen. And you start forgetting. And, and, and let's put it to perspective here. Let's look at people in general. Uh, age 10 to 15 to 20. People are they're sharp. They're sharp. Look at what, they, what kids do. They're, they're more active than we are. All of a sudden, you're 50, you're 25, 30, 35, and 40. You're not as sharp, but you're, you're still pretty good. You're doing okay, and you are, because you're still active. And that those who retire and all of a sudden sit back, all of a sudden, it, things start going downhill. Not only physically, mentally. Blood flow. The more blood you have, because they're not as busy. They're exactly. So, um, I've I feel great. I and mentally, I feel really strong. I'm okay. I'm fifty six. Young and vibrant. Still, uh, I have the body of a thirty five year old, 30, 35 year old. Okay. Healthy body, and I've done it for a reason. Because I'm, uh, I'm in competition with myself. Good. Okay. So the, I, and each each day, I want I want to be that much better. Physically, emotionally, and in self development, there's always an improvement to had to be had. So. The, so when I'm 60 and 70, I want to 
I still want to push. Because my goal is to have a 30-year-old healthy body when I'm 65. Nice. Yes. And if I have a 30-year-old body at 65, I technically, I should have a 30-year-old brain. Because my blood flow will be there. It's not about the, not about muscle. It's, wow. it's not about, it's about being active and, and pumping that blood. Because you, what, what, what does your blood do? It car- it's a, an oxygen carrier. It creates oxygen to your brain. Now, certain, there, there are certain aspects of oxygen that can, be, can oxidize parts of your body. But we still need that oxygen into your brain. You need the blood flow to, to go to go everywhere to allow you to, to feel good and to feel vibrant, to feel alert. Think about this. If you've got this huge, your arteries, this huge vein in back and then the back, okay. and we to decide to turn the close the valve slightly, what would happen? Your blood will not get into your brain, right? And your brain will not have the, the capacity to to function in the same in the same way. And they're making they've got studies for Alzheimer's. They've got studies in Parkinson's, which my dad is is suffering from Parkinson's as well. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's he's and he's uh, he's inactive. However, what would have happened? If he would have taken that approach when he was 30, 35. To be more active? More active and get and have blood flow going to his brain. I can only imagine what would happen. Not saying that I would discount what he's the condition he's in now. Okay. Totally not. Because Parkinson's is something, it's it's not has nothing to do with blood flow. Okay. However, it 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 can enhance the person he he was about to become can we prevent uh conditions like that uh with our lifestyle uh these are i'm i've heard i've read things that they could i am not i'm totally not after that hey that's if you don't know that's that's fair no. i don't I've, know I've, but however i've i've read different theories that there you can okay uh, s- stop or even stop it now. If personally, if it's in, if it's there, if it's just in your genes, it's it's there. Right. Right. But there are many things you could do to prevent certain things from happening. Things you can do to allow better flow, not only blood flow, but better flow of life. And if you think of someone who has is has a condition okay i'll use myself as with epilepsy so many with epilepsy have depressions uh are they get obese get they're being told slow down on exercise which is i i I condone that as is exercise is where it's at Mm -hmm. increase that blood flow and if they're they're out to to be somewhere and if if they could change their, their way of life their way of thinking and become happier so allow self-development in their own lives how would then once they've they felt good about themselves how much more could they accomplish oh i could i would say so much more their whole lives could change because of the fact that if they start feeling assertive they start feeling confident yeah. start being happier and all of a sudden they, they know they can they can knock knock down the next wall i love that, right? that one brick and happiness starts with self feeling self no, understanding oh, we we can't depend on our partner to make us happy we have no. to be happy with ourselves you Nobody. have to that's just just it. it starts inside you have to Does just it, be happy yes and you, uh, just on that topic you t- you're talking about uh, so how many people get i'll use triggers I, the term i used a little while ago not for epilepsy now but for triggers for 
for happiness. You hear people talking about, uh, let's just say, if, I'll use an example. You're, you're going on the street, if you're, if you're driving, and somebody cuts you off. And all of a sudden, some, I, and I hear of so many people talking about how they had these choice words for this person who cut them off, and they're so right. upset. And all of a sudden, what happened? After all, they, they were about to go through a, through a light, light turns red. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm late for that, that meeting. Gets on and hits a pothole. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And what happens is that the brain... You're a Sudbarian, get over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I, know what about, I know about potholes. Uh, so so the brain is wired or the human brain can is wired to see the very last thing that happened to them to them so if the very last thing was something negative they're looking for something else the brain is looking for something else that's negative and the more they see it the bigger the it gets the more the harder it is to get away from is to understand how to turn that around and I've, how many people, I've gone, spoke with countless of people who, who, who understand what I'm saying. Is, what if you were to turn that around? Well, that's something you don't understand. How do you turn that around? And so maybe empathize with people. Maybe that person was on their way somewhere. Maybe we don't know what other no. people are. Oh, you're absolutely right, Candice. Like to, that, go, to be in yeah. their shoes. So how do we know that that person that who cut you off was in the right mental state? We don't. Do we, we don't. Who knows? Maybe that person just lost a mother. Yeah. Maybe that person went, uh, this person's daughter is in the hospital. What if they've gone through a breakup? We absolutely just do not know. So keeping that in mind, we can just take just take a step back and say, wow, I hope that person's okay. Yeah. And imagine that feeling that that alone will give you. If somebody cuts you off and it doesn't, then you, you don't have that unfolding extra thing that just keeps on go moving and get amplifying. And you can just, again, come to acceptance and say, well, we don't know what that person was going through, but I forgive them. Yes, it's quite, quite all right. And all of a sudden, you're still looking for positive things around you. Oh, wow, oh, nice flowers. Or, oh, wow, Look, smell the fresh air. Or, it's, it's spring. One, it. one day you because found of, out that you were missing part of your brain. Would you be upset or would you be in awe? like dan you oh, know like you're in it, awe that you it, you're I, such I'm a, still in awe after all these years that i found out i'm still in really how's i just it's beyond words oh beyond you words, are Candace? that is such a beautiful story and i love how grateful you are for everything in life and you teach people so that light and love that you have in you and around you you share that everywhere you go and with all your clients and you know that you're a blessing to our community. Thank you, Candice. And right back at you. I, we, I think we both feel the same. We don't communicate, we don't talk and communicate very often, but no. however, uh, however, I, 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 every time I see you, I, I feel it. Thank you. I Toastmasters you. brought us together many, many years ago. And yes. uh, I'm very grateful for that. Are you still a member? I am not. Okay. I am not. It's been uh, maybe two, maybe two years now. Okay. But yeah, yeah. two thousand eighteen. So four years yes. for me. And, and wow, and that was part of my personal development as well. Part of my, my my one more step ahead. Which has brought you to running your own business, which is fabulous. Yes. Which has brought me here to what we're what I'm doing now. Wow. So we just about like in a couple of seconds, we're going to hit an hour. Yes. And uh, well, that's our time. But uh, thank you so much for having a candid moment with me today, Dan. Thank you for having me. Thank it, you. Was, it was it was awesome to be able to express myself. 
I am so glad. This is uh, it, it was a pleasure for me to to just allow you to do that. So anytime, it, it was so nice to connect with you. It sure was. Dan Vincent, you just blow my right mind every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sending you hugs. Dan Vincent, everybody. Bye now.